This is a Fox News alert. Breaking news tonight in the so-called pizza bomber mystery. No. The guy just walked out with a, I don't know how much cash in a bag. He had a bomber something wrapped around his neck. He's sitting in the parking lot on the upper pizza. I'm watching him out my rear view mirror right now. It started as a normal summer day on August 28, 2003 in the quiet suburbs of Erie, Pennsylvania. But before it was over, this day would rock the small community to its core and make national headlines for its gruesome attempted bank robbery. This is a Fox News alert. Breaking news tonight in the so-called pizza bomber mystery. There is a new twist in a bizarre bank robbery story in Erie, Pennsylvania. The captured bank robber had a bomb on him. Now he's dead, and so is a co-worker who also died under mysterious circumstances. That ended with the death of a local middle-aged pizza delivery man named Brian Douglas Wells. Brian Wells spent the early part of that day delivering pizzas in the Erie area, as was his routine. But at some point in the afternoon, events suddenly spiraled out of control. No. The guy just walked out with a, I don't know how much cash in a bag, he had a bomb or something wrapped around his neck. He's sitting in the parking lot on the upper pizza. I'm watching him out my rear view mirror right now. A terrified Wells entered a PNC bank near his work with an explosive device locked around his neck. He carried a homemade cane shotgun and a note demanding a quarter of a million dollars from the bank clerks. Just 10 minutes earlier, Wells was brought against his will to the parking lot of a McDonald's restaurant by several individuals. They locked the collar bomb around Wells's neck gave him instructions and the list of robbery demands for the cashiers. It was all part of a bizarre extortion plot orchestrated by a few parties to strap a bomb around an unknowing victim and use them to secure the cash. And with the timer ticking, they sent Wells on his unwilling robbery mission. With no other choice, Wells stumbled into the bank, sweating bullets, and frantically handed over the robbery note. As the clock ticked down, the confused clerks stuffed a bag with just over $8,000 in cash. Meanwhile, police received a 911 call about the missing pizza man wandering the streets with what appeared to be a bomb strapped to his neck. And Brian had said something about a bomb. It was Trooper Zemanski who went up and actually, using a small pair of scissors, cut the size of the shirt because whatever he had was underneath a t-shirt. The bomb used consisted of a hinged collar that worked like a large handcuff to go around the neck, four keyholes that went under the chin, and a rectangular housing containing two pipe bombs and two kitchen timers. As it were recovered at the scene, I was able to assemble what I believe is an accurate replica of that device. Authorities located Wells exiting the bank and apprehended him in the parking lot. Go he never said who it was. He couldn't describe it. They barricaded him as the bomb squad raced to the scene to attempt dismantling this collar explosive within the final few minutes. But it was too late. His eyes just got real wide. And then he went to the back of his head. And that was the end of him. With just seconds left on the timer, and with Wells handcuffed and pinned to the ground for safety, the sinister device detonated. The explosion was small, but at zero range it tore through Brian Wells' chest and neck, killing him instantly right before the eyes of multiple police officers. The madness had ended with Wells paying the ultimate price against his will in one of most outrageous bank heists in history, involving a hostage-turned-bank robber. As the case continued to develop, the investigation garnered national media coverage in America. The man was sitting there as he was since about 3 o'clock when all of a sudden a loud explosion and he flipped onto his back and the state police troopers scrambled. They're still holding guns on him as you can see. They're still not exactly sure his condition. Less than two years since the September 11th attacks, many at first believed the incident to be terrorism related. In the aftermath, the bizarre plot only thickened for investigators who struggled to piece together what happened and why. Several sources came forward shedding more light on the events leading up to Wells' abduction, and the names of two primary perpetrators emerged.
Marjorie Deal Armstrong and Kenneth Barnes. Evidence showed the bomb was made inside Deal Armstrong's home, and the conspirators seemingly built the device intending to strap it to an unwitting third party to secure the cash from the bank that day. Why they chose Wells remains unclear to this day. But after almost 10 years investigating all the intricate details, a guilty verdict was reached in 2010 against Deal Armstrong for orchestrating the robbery. Two additional conspirators were convicted for involvement in building the bomb. But many questions still persist around why exactly Wells was picked and how much he potentially knew about the plot beforehand. In the years following Brian Wells' death, which shocked the nation on that tragic August day. The bizarre, collar bomber case lives on as one of the most perplexing and needlessly violent attempted bank robberies in modern era. While police closed the investigation, the scenes of a terrified Wells shuffling through the bank and into the parking lot with a bomb strapped around his neck remain seared into the memories of Erie's stunned community. Bomber, something wrapped around his neck. He's sitting in the parking lot on the upper peach. I'm watching him out my rear view mirror right now. And justice for Wells still seems incomplete as some culpable parties took their knowledge of the full events to the grave. The concern was safety. That's when the decision was made to do a... Uh... They had to, had to actually cut his head off to remove it. Uh, it. It was probably still is the most difficult decision I've ever made. Thank you for watching this video. If you like our content, please consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and take care.